is Carver Hawkeye Arena. It has never been flooded with emotions like it has today as Michigan and Iowa play. The Hawkeyes return home for the first time since the passing of their hero, their state hero, and star forward, Chris Street. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. It is not overemphasizing. It's saying that the state has been in mourning for 12 days since Chris Street was involved in a car accident, tragically killed on his way to class on Tuesday, January the 19th. The Hawkeyes canceled two games. They were back in action this week, a road game at Michigan State. And what a storybook finish for them in that game. Back on the floor for the first time in 10 days. They trailed by 15 with three and a half minutes to go, sent it to overtime, and then dedicating that performance to Chris Street. You saw E.C. Hurl pointing to the number 40. They pulled off the victory on the road. Now they're back home, Billy Packer. And let's talk about just what kind of effect the emotion will have on this game today. Well, Jim, as everybody knows, it's a Super Bowl Sunday. Football is a sport where emotion, the higher you get, the better off you are, with the exception of one position, the quarterback, because it's a skilled position. In basketball, you have five skilled positions. And I really think in basketball, too much emotion is not a good thing. So I think a real key today for Tom Davis is to bring his team back down to earth so that they can execute what they'll have to do on the floor. The reality of it is there is a game today, an important game at that in the Big Ten. And a year ago when they met here, Jalen Rose had his career high effort of 34 points. What about the way Jalen's playing, Billy? Well, he played that day not as a starter. He was disciplined but came off the bench and was excellent. He is a very gifted backcourt performer, and at six foot eight, he is very difficult to match up with. He has played extremely well against Iowa. He today has got to be the guy that takes over leadership for this Michigan club that's on the heels of Indiana. They cannot afford to lose any more Big Ten games. Well, aside from A.C. Earl, the player who can really get hot from the outside for the Hawkeyes is Val Barnes. Billy had 29 in the victory against Michigan State. Well, he's an explosive scorer. He has been a big second-half scorer in the games for Iowa. I think today that we're going to have to have Val Barnes, if you're an Iowa fan, get off early in this basketball game to keep his team in it early. All right, Billy, let's get out the telestrator and go through Michigan. Some things to look for today from the Wolverines in this game. Well, one of the things that Michigan has that not too many people have had in a long time in college basketball, that's a great inside two-man game. You notice the triangle, three men on one side of the floor. But down in low without any problem at all is Chris Weber. He's going to set a great so solid screen, we're, and we're going to see the solid screen take place. And look at this pick and roll. Beautiful passing on the inside. Two big men that really know how to handle. Jawan Howard that time on into Chris Weber. How about Iowa? How about something to watch for for the Hawkeyes today, Billy? Well, this is a club that is one of the great rebounding teams that we've had in college basketball in recent years. And one of the reasons for it is, look at them in their defensive man-to-man -man position. Everybody's seeing their man and the ball. All five players doing this. When Grant Hill from Duke makes his one-on-one -on -one maneuver against Iowa, watch how everybody turns, squares up, gets good rebounding position, and there you'll see everybody blocking out, including Grant Hill, the shooter. Weak side, strong side, post defense excellent there from a block out they create an area that no matter where the ball goes it's going to be in an Iowa player's hands in this particular case it's going to be AC Earl and that plus 17 represents their rebounding margin over their opponents well, there it is number one in the nation but let's remember that Chris Street was Iowa's top rebounder now let's hear from some of the participants in this game today from Michigan and Iowa their thoughts I tell you, Michigan uh, is almost scary as you look at tape of them and, and think about them because they're so talented. You have, you have to play one of your best games all around. Uh, you can't have any uh, weak spots and you can't have many weak moments uh, to beat a team of this caliber. They're going to press us, so we need to be able to break the press and, and finish some, some plays at the other end, score some baskets off of their press, and minimize the number of turnovers that we have. I think the transition is real important. And then just come down and try to make them shoot from the outside. Really, you know, they have a lot of height inside compared to us now. And they always try to get the ball inside, Weber and Howard and Riley and those guys. I think we have to be really aggressive. We have to take the ball in to the basket uh, at A.C. Earl because uh, he's a great shot blocker for you to be uh, inconsistent, either trying to pull up and shoot over him. He's too tall for that and a great leaper. So we have to take it as that and, and really break their press and stop them from the offensive rebound. 
viewpoints from some of the participants. How about from Mr. Packer for this game today? Well, Jim, you know, we think of this Michigan club as this highly skilled group of freshmen that they put on a show all the time. But this year, they are playing great defense. Iowa's not a club that shoots a high percentage. Today, they're going to have to get some better shots against Michigan because they won't turn them all over off their defense. All right, Billy. Starting lineups are coming up next on CBS. Come back and join us from Carver Hawkeye Arena for Michigan and Iowa. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Mazda. It just feels right. Charles Schwab and Company, offering you the Schwab No Fee IRA. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. This is our vision of what a luxury sedan should be. Not because it offers rich leather and anti-lock brakes, but because it comes standard with an airbag on the driver's side and the passenger side as well. Creating the luxury sedan where even peace of mind is shared. The Mazda 929. Mazda, it just feels right. Here are your starting lineups. And to introduce the players, Bob Holzheimer. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Carver Hawkeye Arena for this afternoon's Big Ten matchup between the Michigan Wolverines and the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. Now let's meet the starting lineups. For Michigan, starting at one forward, a 6'6 senior from Lake Bluff, Illinois, number three, Rob Palinka. For Iowa at one forward, Wade Looking Bill, a 6'5 senior from Fort Dodge. <laughs> Starting at the other forward for Michigan, a 6'9 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number four, Chris Weber. <laughs> for Iowa at the other forward, a 6'5 junior from Joliet, Illinois, number 23, James Winner. Center for Michigan, a 6'9 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 25, Juwan Howard. And at center for Iowa, a 6'10 senior from Moline, Illinois, number 55, A.C. Earl. Starting at one guard for the Wolverines, a 6'5 sophomore from Plano, Texas, number 24, Jimmy King. <laughs> at one forward, at one guard for the Hawkeyes, a 5'11 junior from Fort Worth, Texas, number 10, Kevin Smith. <laughs> at the other guard for Michigan, a 6'8 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number five, Jalen Rose. <laughs> and starting at the other guard for the Hawkeyes, a 6'2 senior from Wichita, Kansas, number 20, Val Barnes. And introducing the coaches for Michigan in his fourth full season, Steve Fisher, assi assisted by Brian Dutcher, Perry Watson, and Jay Smith. And introducing the coach of the Hawkeyes in his seventh season in Iowa, Tom Davis, assisted by Gary Close, Rick Boss, and Rich Walker. All right, Bob Holzhammer with the introductions. Fifth-ranked Michigan, 11th-ranked Iowa, coming up next. Indiana is unbeaten in the Big Ten. Michigan's only loss to the Hoosiers, one-point loss at that. Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa fifth, and the rest of the Big Ten. The officials today, Jim Burr from Albany, New York, Ed Hightower from Alton, Illinois, and Tim Higgins from Ramsey, New Jersey. Chris Weber with that protective mask in the middle with A.C. Earl, and Earl tips it back to Smith. Barnes in the corner, here's Iowa. Great man, Jim. It's not often that Weber does not get the tip. A.C. Earl has position on him. Again, position by A.C. Earl. 
Earl walked. And what we're, what we're seeing, Jim, is doubling down from the weak side, that time by Rose. So they're going to let Earl touch the ball and then from the weak side come down and double team him. Jalen Rose controlling. He had his 20th birthday yesterday and returns to the side of his career high 34 set last January here. How about Jawan Howard being the man that helps bring the ball up the court? Really a gifted big man, skilled in all areas. Jimmy King, almost a set shot, a three-pointer for King to open the scoring. Earl at the other end, rejected by Weber. Here comes Michigan on the break. King with the ball. He was their top three shooter last year. Howard jumper. 5 nothing Michigan. He really gets the ball up above his head beautifully on that short jump shot. Understands his range. Always takes good shots. Winters driving past Howard and outside Howard on the hole. And Jim, you remember this Michigan team last year? Ray Jackson was their defensive stopper. And now you've got Jimmy King, who's developed into an outstanding defender. And then you have Howard, who's as good a low post defender in college basketball. So that gives them three outstanding defenders. Steve Fisher told us that King has quietly become our best defensive stopper. King is guarding Barnes at the moment. Inside is Earl. There's that double team again. Open is Smith, not usually a good outside shooter. He missed that one. That's one of the reasons why that weak side double team is so effective, because they don't care if it goes back out to Smith for the jump shot. Smith coming off a season high against Michigan State, where he had 11. And here he gets the rebound and takes it up the middle. Driving Smith. Beautiful move, but he missed the shot. Howard. What a dribble. And a turnaround oh, move by Jawan Howard taking it the length of the court. Well, Jim, we watched him in practice, and you and I both feel he's as hard a working guy on the basic fundamentals as any big guy we've seen in college basketball. And there's why his game is progressing to such a high level. Fisher says he's our toughest competitor, and he really does work to improve himself every minute in practice. Barnes missing a three. Iowa still has not scored. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the game. We talked about Jim's skilled positions being too high up for a game, and I think that's what's happening to Iowa right now. They need to go down low to AC Earl a while. On the baseline, Rose had to alter his shot. Weber flips it in, though. 9-0 Michigan. Right now, you got to get that ball down inside to AC Earl. Go ahead and let him double team, dish back out, try to get Val Barnes in a situation where he's got the jump shot. Earl wants the shot. Earl gets Iowa on the scoreboard. That's the man. Earl averaging 16 points, had 27 and had a career high 16 rebounds in the victory over the Spartans on Thursday. He had 13 rebounds a number of times, but that breaks his all time. And there's a block. Iowa's all time shot blocker, AC Earl. Number 322 on his career. Smart play by Winters that time, not to try to advance the ball with the dribble. Back screen looking for the lob for Winters, not there. Barnes slicing and scoring. Jim, there was a curl move by Jalen Rose, despite the fact that Michigan worked on that all day yesterday in practice on their defensive assignment. Jalen just didn't beat Val Barnes to the spot. Lazy getting there. Oh, what hand? Blocked by Earl. His second rejection and a whistle before the shot. They call a foul, I believe, on Earl. First, he picked up his second block of the game. Well, Jim, the defender of the year last year in the Big Ten probably will be right up there again this year. Back-to-back -back years, he broke his own Iowa records for shot blocking and moving up on the national list. Earl sits, two players in for Iowa, number 42, Jay Webb, and 52, Russ Millard. <laughs> Jawan Howard now a six. Now Millard got a piece of that. Howard just too strong, ripped the ball away from him. Barnes, that's a three-pointer. 11-7, Michigan. Really important for Iowa to get Barnes off in the first half. 
He's been brilliant in second half of games. Here's the press trying to force it down one side, but Howard, of course, being the trailer, good safety valve. Weber. Malinka tried to save it, had to put on the line. Iowa basketball. Well, Michigan raced out to a 9-0 lead, and Iowa scored seven of the last nine, so it's 11-7, Michigan. Billy, as we digest these numbers with this season's numbers on the right for Michigan, you can see they've improved in a lot of areas. Well, Jim, a much better basketball team. The thing that really impressed you, with the exception of Indiana having a 55% shooting game against these guys, in the last eight games, they've held opponents to 41%. Webb with a nice shot. The pressure, Howard able to get it in. Other than Indiana shooting 55% from the floor, the next best was 47% against Michigan all year. Exactly. Nice Weber. stop. Right back to Weber. Forget about it. And climbs right over Millard. Has the presence of mind to make that catch in traffic and then do the step right on over without walking. He's quite a player. Montier Glasper in for Iowa, number 13, and Kenyon Murray, number three, who gets it into Millard. Jim Millard's quite a story. You know, he comes in the last game, not expected to play much all year, and has five points, four rebounds, and just... A short period of time against Michigan State. Could become a key player. That was his first action yep. of his career at Iowa. Redshirted last year. Ray Jackson in for the Fab Five. And a kick. Michigan a win bound. Watch Weber. Steps right over. Gets his composed feeling. Goes up with the stuff. Brilliant play. They see Earl back in. He's on Rose. Now a switch off. Throws up. Oh, that's going to be goaltending. Well, no question about the call, but it shows you the timing by A.C. Earl. He just was too far under the basket when he went up on this one, but he it catches it right on the way as it starts down. Great timing. Long arms. There's that back screen, and Earl puts it on the floor, and he... It almost looks like he's uncoordinated when he does that, but he has the ability to keep that ball in his possession. That was off of Rose. Iowa with two freshmen on the floor right now. Actually, three freshmen. Oh, nope. Two freshmen. They've taken Millard out. Here's right. Glasper. He's one of them. And uh, the other freshman is Kenyon Murray, who is now with the basketball right there. And a former Mr. Basketball of Michigan, so a little emotion for him here today. Earl not even close on the baseline turnaround. Iowa had hit its last five from the floor before that one. And see how Tom Davis has moved his press up a little bit further. Now what Michigan's going to try to do is to throw over the front line of the Iowa press. They've got the size with Rose back there to do it. Now Riley in the game gives him another big target. So Weber out, Riley in, and back in now for Iowa is Winters, joined by Jim Bartles, who's getting his first playing time. Here we go into the zone, with Winters playing on top, and he drops all the way down inside. Jackson nails the three. Now they call it a two. They rule it a two. Jackson wanting to get back into that starting lineup, playing very aggressive basketball since he came back from that injury. Jackson There's a switch. Somebody's wide open. About to say that Jackson missed seven games because of a dislocated shoulder. Do you think it's just a matter of time before they they work him back in? I, you know, starting I, I would think so, Jim. He gives them so much defensively. He's a very aggressive basketball player, and they, that became a unit uh, that was hard to handle last year at the end of the season. I would anticipate that five will get back together again shortly. Looking Bill in, and he's inbounding for Iowa. Winters right underneath. Pump fake. And the rebound to Rose. Oh, way too high. Off the glass. Bartles has it. Jalen might have thought that Chris Weber was still in the game. He threw it up there where Weber can grab it. Riley not as quick off his feet. They had to stop the action to fix the net at the Iowa end. And some people a little upset. They thought the Hawkeyes had a break opportunity. 
and if they had missed the basket, they'd say, why didn't you stop the game and let the net come down? So you can't win if you're a ref sometimes. But it was the right call. There's that double team from the weak side again. Looking Bill, three-pointer off the back of the rim. King settles down in the backcourt, and he'll bring it up. And here you see the 1-2-2 two, two zone, winners up top. Riley had position, did a great job of uh, backing in on Looking Bill. Well, Jim, what happened to Looking Bill? He was so low down on the blocks. He has got the front, Riley, in that situation. Oh, there's a uh, Rose swing. just took out Looking Bill. Now, you know, I really don't agree with that call, Jim, unless they're calling it on Looking Bill. They are calling it on well, Looking Bill. I'll tell you why. Looking Bill was not planted, and Rose has the right to be moving. The fact that Rose knocked Looking Bill down does not mean that's a foul. Now, watch this right here. But is it a foul the other way? No, I, no, I think it's a foul on Looking Bill. He was not planted to set the solid screen. He's the one that created the contact. Rose was already moving. He has the right. Dougie's a little stronger than we think. He put Looking Bill right in his back. Smith off Barnes, the deflection Barnes by open. Earl. Smith takes it, had the right spin on it. 19 to 13, Michigan. There again, they're throwing over the top of the press. Tom Davis is going to recognize that and change some things. Now there's a turnover. And a break in the action with the Wolverines leading by six. You're going to see a body laying on the floor here in a second. <laughs> And it's going to be this man right here. Looking Bill's going to come in. He's going to hit Rose, and he's going to end up on the floor. But the foul is going to be on Looking Bill because he's a moving screen. He's not out of position. Excellent call by the referees. It almost appeared to me, Billy, that Looking Bill was going to slide right by Rose and hardly make contact. I thought maybe well, then, it was going to be a no call. Well, then, then Rose did a good job by making sure there was contact. Nice job by Riley on the inside. Michigan with the six-point lead. Tally in. Michael Tally now in for the first time. Number 14 for Michigan. And the 2-3 zone stays, and there's that same attack. Winters stripped it away. Barnes, three-pointer. Weber was hacked by Winters when he went up for the rebound. Millard back in along with Murray. Webb and Winters sit. Jim Winters going down. He had 18 rebounds in a ball game against American U to give you an idea of how he can get up on the boards. Very strong. Here's that 1-2, one, 1-1 one, one full court pressure. Go ahead. Wolverines with a rebounding edge right now of 10 to 2. Tally into the game. He's had big games against Iowa in his career. Riley with a nice touch. He's their top free throw shooter, also the seven-footer. Smooth on that one. And Murray down low, they double team, good pass weak side. Millard got it in to Earl. And the foul against Michigan. Against Ray Jackson. Next Saturday on CBS, Florida State and UConn. Two o'clock Eastern time. And that'll be followed by the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro Amble premiere. Our golf coverage on CBS 93 style. From really my favorite spot in the whole world, Pebble Beach. Well, Jim, you know, you see that Florida State situation. They were part of that back-to-back -back nights this week when Florida State had that loss against North Carolina in a game that they had salted away. 21-point lead in that exactly. game, second half. And Michigan State, of course, had Iowa to the point that you'd never believe Iowa could come back in that game and win. A part of the changing focus in college basketball, and one in which I think the semi-delay game is going to have to become an important part of coaching philosophy, the way teams shoot that three and occupy the 45-second shot clock. Iowa somehow scored 21 points in the last three minutes of regulation to get that game to overtime. Tally. Underneath Earl, and a player on his back. They call it on Weber. Now, Jim, remember at the start of the show, we talked about telestrating the way Iowa gets a triangle on the basket to rebound? Here is a perfect example. Watch the blocking out. Millard puts the body on Weber. Doesn't allow him to get inside. And there's A.C. Earl picking off the rebound, but Michigan had no way to get inside position. Good technique, great coaching there by Tom Davis.
Murray right here. Good-looking prospect for Iowa. Asked to move out of the starting lineup, said he feels more comfortable coming in as a reserve. And he hits the two as we're talking about him. Cuts it to five, 21-16 Michigan. Riley. Over the back, it's going to be on Weber. Again, defensive positioning on the boards by Iowa. Weber has to go over the back because Iowa's got everything covered inside. Second on Weber, the fifth team foul against Michigan. Jim, one of the things, if I were Iowa, that I would do, I would feed the post, being A.C. Earl, with Smith, who's their, not their best outside shooter, because what's happening, they're feeding the post with their best outside shooter. Therefore, the double team's taking place. They're not worried about Smith. Let Smith pass the ball down low. Murray from almost the same spot he hit a minute ago. Rose with the long outlet. Weber trailing. Murray gets back for the rebound, and Jackson bumped him. That'll be the sixth team foul and the second against Ray Jackson. That was a well-executed fast break by Michigan, and Weber almost pulled off a sensational move with the ball. But he again, his hip for just a second. Right. Great transition defense by Iowa getting back, eliminating the fast break. Rob Polinka has come in for Michigan. Weber sits. Polinka, this is his second Big Ten start. He had his first earlier in the week against Ohio State and responded with 16 points. Millard can't oh, handle it. Murray gets it and a whistle underneath. Another Michigan foul. They picked up a bunch in a quick span here. That's against Tally, and they'll shoot a one and one. Jim, what we're seeing right now, I think, is Iowa starting to calm down a little bit from that emotion they started this game with, starting to get a lot better shots on the inside. And I think their, their substitution pattern now is starting to work out a little better. One and one. In the Big Ten, Iowa the best free throw shooting team, and Michigan 11. And I, Out and of the 11. Shooting almost 71%, and they go to the line. They're kind of like the Dukes of this world. They've had 358 maids, and their opponent had only been to the line 225 times. It's an important part of their offense. Lead has been trimmed to three. Iowa very scrappy, but unable to force the turnover on that series. And it is still in that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Tally out on top. He needs to hit a shot. Tally's going to be open, out on top. He finds Palenka open, way too long. Riley with the rebound and a foul against A.C. Earl. Put Riley on the line for two. He's their, again, best free throw shooter. For Earl, that's his second 15 foul. You know, Jim, what's kind of crazy, and we just think back of that Duke-Iowa game, Iowa only went to the foul line five times against Duke, it, a team that, you know, the, the way they play, it's hard to believe. Their lowest total in years. Yep. Glasper back in for Smith. Eric Riley, 83% at the line for two. 24 out of 29. And Looking Bill will come in. Earl with the two fouls will sit. And when you go back to last year, of course, Iowa lost both games to Michigan. And in both of those games, Michigan shot right up about 53%. Iowa down in the 30s. So important for them to start getting some baskets a little bit easier than what they're taking so far. Steve Fisher told us yesterday about Riley. I've got to find him more time. He's been cheated out of minutes, and it's my fault. Well, it was interesting that in talking to him and to his assistant coach to talk about playing Riley and Howard and Weber at the same time may be an answer. But Steve Fisher doesn't think so. Howard missed in the lane. Murray from the corner. Two straight jumpers. It's a two-point game, 22-20 Michigan. Rose had to just save it right in front of us. Iowa now with a chance to tie it. Blaster has it blocked, but he gets it back. That wasn't the shot that Tom Davis wanted. Getting a lot done uh, during the time to rest an AC Earl here, Jim. Where are the points going to come from? Kenyon Murray, he's the only one who's been able to put it up out of this group. 
Bartles in the game can shoot the long range three, but un unable to get open. That's a moment. screen. There's Murray. That's a three for the lead. And a foul on the play. Chance for the rear four point play. And Jim Murray talked about the players from Michigan State giving him a lot of lip in that ball game just this week about leaving the state of Michigan. Now with his parents here today, he is playing very well against a team that he almost became a teammate of. From Battle Creek, Michigan, Kenyon Murray. Jackson and King, the two Texans back in for the Wolverines. Polinka and Tally go out. Murray, kind of interesting, Billy, when we visited with him, he said he visited with Michigan and then signed with Iowa the very next day. Well, you know, let's be honest. If you're a player of his magnitude and you take a look at five freshmen that are starting and, and you say, hey, a, I'd like to have some playing time right off the bat. But, that's, but that visit would have been in November of 91, yep. right about the time when they were just practicing at Michigan. We didn't know exactly what kind of impact the Fab Five would have on college basketball. No, Although think, you kind of had, uh, had I think, clue, right? I, right, I think high school players have a better idea than we do sometimes about talent. Jackson. Jackson kind of cleared out on the way up. I thought they might call it against him, but instead Webb gets the whistle. His second. Now, Ray, Ray Jackson's pants belie the fact that he is a Skywalker. I mean, it looks like he's got a load in him, you know, when he, when he walks around here. But he gets off the ground as well as anybody on this Michigan team. Great vertical leap and almost flush that last one. Pat O'Brien coming up with Prudential Securities at the half with a tribute I think to on Chris Pat, Street. On Pat's Hoop de Jure show, they ought to see who has the longest pants in college basketball. Jackson would be in the running. Check out Jalen Rose in practice. He's pretty close, too. Michigan with the one-point lead. Well, Michigan exploded to a 9-0 lead, but field goal percentage is pretty high. In fact, look at Michigan, 50%, uh, and Iowa allows only 38% of the season. Right, and, and Iowa shooting 47%. We talked about how well Michigan is doing holding people down in the 41 percentile with the exception of their Big Ten game against Indiana. So, team shooting a little better than expected. Michigan straight man-to-man -man the whole game. Iowa showing uh, various defenses. Millard on Weber. Jim, I like him. He's powerful inside. Winners miss the easy one. Back to Barnes. He'll use the glass. That was Millard that kept it alive. Millard didn't look intimidated at all, making a move no, on sir. Weber. Rose to Jackson. Nice job by Jalen Rose. Smart play the way he dished that off. Ray Jackson with six. Pretty good hands by Winters. Barnes, he likes this one. Tried to save it, but to no avail. Barnes, a pretty good rebounder, Jim, from the guard position. Good nose for the ball following his shot after misses. <laughs> Weber showing a lot of patience on that. Yep. I don't think... And he gets it eventually. Now, uh, Jim, what happened is that I would didn't recognize the defense they're in. Millard didn't realize he's supposed to be the man out front. But well, Michigan wisely uh, took their time, got in good position, and really uh, hit an easy two. Weber has six. And a reach in by Jackson. That'll be number three against Ray Jackson. It'll be a one and one for Iowa. Here was the 1-2-2 two, two zone, but what happened, Millard wasn't sure of his position in the zone, and when he went out front, Michigan attacked from the backside. Very smart playing by the Michigan uh, Michigan club. Here's Boskel in for the first time, Jim. He has started some games recently during Jackson's absence. Had some tendonitis problems with his knee. 
We'll all remember how well he played last year in the Final Four. Really was the catalyst to get Michigan back on track in that Cincinnati game. Yeah, he came off the bench against the Bearcats with nine points and four rebounds. Hey, and talking, I saw your picks the other day. Uh -oh. You've got the, the same Final Four back again next year. <laughs> hey. I tell you, that Cincinnati club, uh, they are doing it on both ends of the floor. Everyone wants to overlook them, Stephen Still. And when the, when the new poll is released tomorrow, look and, and see in, uh, how last year's Final Four is in the top six. We found the way back. Weber on the follow. There was one of the few times you didn't find Iowa properly blocking out from the weak side. Chris Weber left unattended. Doesn't happen often. 30-27 Wolverines. See, again, Iowa keeps trying to feed down to, to A.C. Earl with Barnes on the same side of the court. They're doubling down on A.C. Earl. Barnes should be on the other side of the floor, so A.C. could just flip it back out to him for an easy jump shot. Webb and Smith in for Millard and Glasper. When you know you're going to be double teamed from the weak side, A.C. Earl should just catch that ball and fire opposite, but they've got to have their best shooter opposite. Good defense by Jawan Howard on ACL. Just wouldn't go for any fakes. Earl, eight footer. Earl with five, and Iowa within one. As I said, uncoordinated, but there was a great change off the pass. shot by Jalen. Up ahead, winners can give him the lead. And a steal by Smith. Barnes passes up. Oh, right. what a shot. Doesn't fall. Howard with the rebound. Jalen Rose, when he drives to the inside, Jimmy King's got to get back for defensive balance. Well, he's been off this year on his three. He, well, he's going to stay off because he doesn't work at it. And a travel gives the ball back to the Wolverines. Rose only 24%, Billy, from three-point land. Well, if You know, he'd be the kind of guy you'd want to tape in practice and let him see his own tape because he never works hard on his three-point shooting under game conditions. And therefore, when the game comes and he's speeding up, it's just not there to be made. He's a gifted player, but the work ethic and practice, and particularly on that particular skill, is not there. Riley and Weber out. For that matter, Rose's scoring average is down a couple of this year. Average of 15.5 a game. But Steve Fisher says he's our leader. Here you see that defense again, changing up a little bit. Bosco. Jay Webb out front makes a tough target to shoot over. King goes to the other side. Good move by Jimmy King. Wisely used the rim to shield off the defenders. Smith. Oh, yeah. Kevin Smith gives Iowa the lead back. 420 left in the half. Rose, plus one. Oh, and he counts it. At 6'8", Jim, there's what he does so well. He just goes over the top of guards, and he glides through the air. I'll just, just glide right through the air. No opportunity for Smith to handle him. Smith at about 5'10". Jalen just goes at 6'8", goes right over the top. 44 Bartles in, and A.C. Earl back also with the two fouls. And Jim, you talked about Jalen. Jalen this year from the three-point line is now 10 for 42. So you're down, you know, under 25%. Not good at all. Iowa number 11, Kevin Skillet with his first action. Three-point play for Rose. Now with five points. Murray gives it up inside to Earl. Makes the move, gets the foul, almost got it to drop. He'll shoot two. 
A.C. Earl, first team, all Big Ten in 92. You know, I didn't even realize it. You know, not one player off of Michigan made first team at right. all Big Ten last year. They made it all the way to the final right. four. Jalen and, and Chris Weber both made it uh, second team. Of course, uh, Chris was uh, first team all conference preseason this year, along with this young man right here, A.C. Earl. All time at Iowa, first in blocks. In fact, he's the leading active shot blocker in college basketball. Right. I'll tell you what's interesting, Jim. Of course, he's already graduated, but what's interesting, he redshirted his freshman year not because of anything other than the fact he just didn't play basketball well enough to be a Big Ten player. Now he is one of the best in the league. Hard work, dedication. He's done it both in the classroom and on the court. He made big, himself what he is today. And a big career ahead. Yep. Looking Bill replaces him. Game is tied with 4.05 left in the half. Again, Michigan going right over the top of the press. Bosco with the three. That's the one that he yep. tried against Indiana the game's in. And surprisingly, Weber got the rebound, and Henderson rejected it. So hold on for victory for the Hoosiers. We will have, by the way, the rematch for those two February the 14th. What could be for the Big Ten title? Well, this league is so deep this year that you've got to believe somewhere along the line somebody's going to slow down IU other than Michigan. But they have been just knocking teams out of the way. The other thing, Jim, when you take a look at the schedule, in Indiana has won a lot of games on the road in the Big Ten. Back half of their season is stacked at home. Yep. That foul was against Riley, his second. So Millard at the line for two. Guys. Smith comes back in. I think Millard is uh, going to play some minutes, Jim, before this is over. You know what? We talk about, you know, where's the playing time that uh, Chris Street uh, had, you know, all the minutes that he played so aggressively, and it's got to come off that bench somewhere. I think Millard's one of those guys going to take up some of those minutes. He was not eligible until the semester break. Had 15 minutes of action on Thursday. He'll see a lot of time today. Iowa down one. Hawkeye Fever here at uh, Carver Hawkeye Arena in Michigan by one. Coming up on Prudential Securities at the half. All the sports news, including government versus the referees. Controversy in the Big Ten. And the 20th from the last word on Super Bowl 27. A live report for the big game and a special tribute to Chris Street uh, here at uh, Iowa. And uh, all that's coming up on Prudential Securities. At the half, back to you guys. Thanks, Pat. And the Chris Street family in attendance today, up from Indianola, two hours away. Here again, we see the valuable ability of Howard to be able to handle that ball. He doesn't get it over in 10 seconds. That he let the ball release, but it never got into the front core. You've got to catch the ball. Good call. That, and, and what you have down there is the official telling both Steve Fisher and the players from Michigan that the ball must touch somebody in that front court. Really packing things in on A.C. Earl now. Two good shooters in the game, Barnes and Murray. Good pass by Earl. But it was stolen out of the hands of Webb. Howard lobs it to Riley. And Earl got a hand on it. Again, Earl just running the floor. Smith with a three, pull up three. Murray had position underneath, but on the outside, the foul over the back on Webb. Murray extremely quick getting off the floor down on the inside. Likes to play in the open court area. The third on Webb, so he'll go to the bench. Millard in. And Michigan will shoot a one and one. Jim, I think that Smith has got to be a little bit more patient. You know, you've got A.C. Earl down low. Now they can surround that particular defense that's trying to double-team A.C. Earl with both Barnes and Kenyon Murray. So get Smith over on the side. Let him feed, and it gives... 
A.C. Earl an opportunity to go out in either direction now, and Iowa could be effective by getting it down inside and pumping it out quickly. And the one and one, long rebound to Smith. Barnes jumper. Iowa back in front, 39-38. He is a scorer. Murray got an elbow in the face. Unintentional from Bosco. Now he can get some consultation from Weber on that. That's about the same type of injury he had. From behind, Earl with the block. Out of bounds belongs to the Wolverines. And we'll see what happens. So often, you just have your nose in the wrong place at the wrong time. And we... We talked about Chris Weber getting hit in practice, and then, of course, he comes back the very first game in the first few minutes, gets hit in the same way. Weber hopes to have the mask off in one week. Might have to have it in the Purdue game next Sunday, you'll see here on CBS, but after that, they say it'll be clear. Rose gets the three this time, and Riley trying to get position underneath, called for the foul. You just, yeah, the basket counts. You see how Jalen concentrated on that shot, Jim? He stuck right with it. Followed it all the way into the basket. This guy, Ace Earl, he is everywhere down in the post, both on, on the offensive and defensive end of the floor. Has only averaged throughout his career two fouls a game. Weber comes in for Riley, who sits with three. I'm talking about fouls committed, not fouls on the line. So that's amazing that he plays well within himself. And he has not fouled out of a game since his freshman year. Correct. You asked me that question when we had that game yep. at Duke. That's right. Who was the player that never fouled out of a game? In his career. Will Chamberlain. You I'm going to give you one today, all right? You know how many times my answer there, by the what way, was, was, was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. As Lou Alcindor at UCLA, he fouled out of two games. I had to go back home and look it up. Oh, you Only two times. But I'm going to give you one today, okay? And I hate to break up this game. A very important day today. But you're going to do it anyway. Yeah, I am. One man more important to what we're doing right now and, and the Super Bowl than any man in the history of, of sport. And I'm going to tell you what it was. Wait, it has something to do with this game? And this, with the basketball that we're watching and today's Super Bowl. You know what it was? Dr. Naismith. Barnes on the steal, and Iowa takes the two-point lead. First time they picked one on the inbounds pass. Rose ties it at the other end. All right, how I'll about tell you why. Naismith is the man that basically invented the football helmet. So without him, we don't have basketball. Without him, you don't have football. So he's more important than that. I close my case. <laughs> But you started talking about the Super Bowl. That's where you <laughs> threw me off. Winners makes the move. Over the back is Millard. Yep. You talk about Naismith. I'll throw one at you. Okay. You know this, though, I'm sure. I don't know. The only coach in Kansas yep. history with a losing record. I didn't Dr. James say, yeah, Naismith. I didn't say he could coach. I said he's important <laughs> to the day today. Yeah, that is our, our got out of league. coaching to, uh, to invent the football, football helmet. Yeah, there right. you go. <laughs> Millard with the foul, his first, and this is a one-on-one. -on -one. It's only nine against Iowa. Next one will be the double bonus. Howard's already missed the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Iowa started off, as we said, in a very emotional pitch, down nine-nothing. They've done a fine job to get back in this one. That puts Michigan in front. This guy had 20 rebounds in the game against Wisconsin this season and 18 points. Pretty active. <laughs> Millard Ooh, with a forceful good rebound. rebound. Good rebound. <laughs> Nobody in the low post now just spreading things out. Trying to get some back screens. Under a minute to go in the first half. You'd think they'd want to have Val Barnes put one up here from somewhere. Get him the ball. Down to 14 seconds. Last for better look up at the shot clock. Now at 10. 
Yeah. Here comes Barnes following around, doesn't get the ball. Winters will take it. Bosco blocked it. And Howard snares it. Smart play by Howard. You know, realizing he's got time on the clock to get one last shot. Doesn't force a bad pass. And there's that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Iowa State in a good part of this half. How about Bosco down in the deep corner, Jim? Go inside and hit Bosco. He made his last one from the corner. Under 10. There he is. He's got the shot from the corner. Oh, Weber on a push. And that's going to be his third. Well, that was good execution by Michigan. They got Bosco the shot where he made the last one, and Chris Weber picks up a cheap foul. With Ace. four seconds to go. The only good news about that for Chris Weber, he gets to take that mask off. So now in the double bonus, they'll shoot two. Looking Bill will shoot two. Could give Iowa the lead at halftime. By the way, we see Iowa right now with 43 points. The most points scored on Michigan this entire season, Billy. Might surprise you. Duke University. Duke. Yep. 79 points right. to Iowa. Way ahead of that pace. The game is tied. Now with one more looking bill. Jim, we haven't given this Michigan club enough credit for the way they've been playing this year. You know, last year they outspoken the brass fast five. This year they're playing solid basketball. The four and a half King try to go behind the back. We got a tie game at the half. Michigan scored the game's first nine points, but Iowa comes back to tie it at the intermission. So at the end of the first half, the score, Michigan 44, Iowa. 44. Pat O'Brien will be along with Prudential Securities at the half after this message and a word from your local station. Three weeks ago, our Chevrolet player of the game was number 40, Chris Street. At today's game, they are wearing number 40 on their jerseys in memory of this young man whose death brought tears to the Hawkeye State. There's something about growing up in Iowa, they never forget you. And if you're an Iowa Hawkeye, it shouldn't, but somehow it makes it worse. They loved their Hawkeyes here, and they loved Chris Street, whose time here was too short. The 20-year-old Street apparently pulled into the path of a county snowplow as he was leaving a team there near the intersection of Highway 1 and I-80 around 7 p.m. Officials say Street was dead at the scene. You know, he always just did something that would try to help you or help the team, and he always cared about everybody. You know, he always tried to learn just to fit in and just to do whatever it took. And it was fun seeing him progress as, he, you know, as his career went on. Whatever it took to be a good player, a good friend, and more than a good memory. No, Chris leaves as an inspiration, a good one. To me, um, I think Chris represented the intensity of uh, life. Uh, the openness of uh, the Midwest. There's something about growing up in Iowa. For one thing, if it's possible, you want to be a Hawkeye. Then you want to help the team. And then, well, you never want to leave. Chris Street got all three. in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes tied with fifth-ranked Michigan, 44 all at halftime. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. And uh, Billy, your thoughts on the first half? Well, Jim, we talked about the emotion at the start of the game, and I thought that Iowa was up a little bit too high. They were down 9 nothing. did an excellent job changing up their defenses and getting back in this, and of course, in a tie situation right now, and Michigan in a little bit of foul trouble. I think Iowa's got them kind of where they want them kind of interesting. Check out the shot selection in the first half for the Wolverines, Billy. Yeah, you can see that everything that they're doing is on the left-hand side of the floor. That, uh, of course, shows the shots that they have missed. Then when you throw in the shots that they have made, basically, everything is still over on that side of the floor. Why? How about the fact that Jalen Rose, a left-handed player, moves down that side of the floor, and Iowa doing a good job keeping them on only one half of the court. Well, Rose leads Michigan with 10 points. Val Barnes, 11. 
for Iowa. Half time stats. Michigan scoring from the inside. You could tell that in the shot selection graphic. They did a good job getting the ball right down from the front, down inside against that zone. And the Wolverines manning the boards. That's surprising in a way in the fact that Iowa has 17 plus uh, rebounds over their opponents. Iowa at the line though has made eight more than Michigan. And there are your top two scores. Rose and Barnes. Michigan has the basketball to start the second half. A Wolverine win that probably moved to number three in the polls. And Iowa victory will move into the top ten with Seton Hall falling back this week. Yeah, but just think Bosco starting here in the second half. Maybe Steve Fisher likes the way he put up those jump shots. Made one, missed one. Almost stolen by Winters. Now there's a case where Winters started off all the way up at the top of the key in the 1-2-2 zone and works his way right back down to the baseline. Covers a lot of ground from that position in their zone defense. Pick up man-to-man -man out of bounds. Drop back into the zone. Most people do the opposite. Go zone out of bounds and try to pick up man-to-man. Under 10 on the shot clock. Five on the shot clock. Weber just in time. Good three-point shooter, Jim. And he is their top three-point yes, shooter. Yes, sir. Excellent. 11 now for Weber. That's 21 of 47 three-pointers on the year for Chris Weber. He doesn't mind putting them out, up out there. He's an excellent shooter. Again, there's that double team from the weak side. Barnes with a three of his own. The tie at 47. Now Barnes right at a 40% three-point shooter, so obviously the two best on these two clubs. Here again, Rose using the left-hand side of the court. Jimmy King. Long rebound to Earl. Smith in the middle. Pull up jumper. He did a couple like that today. Even though he, Jim, even though he made that, that was not a good idea. Almost stole it. Nobody was under the board. Would have been a complete turnaround for Michigan. Got to wait on some people. Collard. A lot of bodies around him. Barnes has it in the corner. AC Earl looking for the lob. Three-pointer. Long rebound right back to him. Looking Bill. Good pass to Earl. Nice team play by Iowa. And the crowd is on its feet. Another coaching point that Michigan said yesterday in practice. Let the ball bounce around to get set up against the press. push outside. I think it's on Winters. As you pointed out, Jalen Rose had the big game last year against Iowa. Hitting 34 against them. Now becoming more aggressive off the dribble. Looking Bill sits. Winters, by the way, with his second personal foul. Howard. A.C. Earl with the outlet to Smith. On the wing to Barnes. Running one hand. Running one hand. You don't see many of those, Jim. Rose. Oh, what a spin on that one. Boy, Iowa really going up and down the floor against Michigan early in the second half. Offensive. Against Smith, out of control. Yep. That's a shot from the pass, Jim. Barnes going right up there, shooting the old time one-hander off the run. I didn't know that the modern college player <laughs> had that shot in his arsenal. Looked like Packer on that oh, one. Oh, now wait a minute. Riley back in, Jackson in. Remember, Jackson has three fouls. I give you Oscar Robertson or okay. somebody. <laughs> Not, you know, come on, please, a real player. <laughs> Bob Cousy. I mean, we go back into those days. Not you see so few of those. Everything today is you go all the way for the jam or you pull up for the jumper. Riley, a 
little push off there. Should we see more of those running one? Yeah, I think it's. A, I certainly think it's a shot, particularly when you penetrate against zone defenses. Rose baseline to Jackson. Jalen Rose is now starting to take over the game for Michigan. Really penetrating against his own, and Barnes likewise. Wide open. Wide open was Jackson. Yep. Jackson, hey, he's looking good offensive-wise. Of course, the last two are lay-ins, but he now has 10 points off the bench. That's just brilliant play by, by Jalen. He, he realized that Jackson had broken out and was open early. He didn't get the first pass. Hit him with a second one. Webb. Left hand. The left hand, it spins out. Iowa basketball. Game is tied 53. When we talked about it in the first half, I don't think Iowa has done a good job today realizing on that double team on AC Earl where to get the ball to a good shooter. Glasper. Montier Glasper back in. Now, see, Webb is the man that would be open. Outside, and Riley gets his fourth. Now, Steve Fisher can come back with Chris Weber, as he'll do right here. Riley not capable of going out and guard AC Earl when he puts the ball on the floor 20 feet away. Dead ball under 16 minutes. They head to the bench with the game still tied, 53 all. It was tied at the half. You're looking at Chris Street's family, and we want to mention that they sent down to us a handwritten note, and I'll read it to you. The Street family would like to express their sincere thank you for all the people across Iowa and the country who have let them know how much everyone loved Chris. We will never forget your support. Signed, Mike Street and family. Jim, a foul over the back. Kenyon Murray again being very active inside. Jawan Howard with his second foul. Millard back in, takes the inbounds. Over Weber who has the three personals. Smart play by Chris Weber not to go ahead and try to chop down on Millard. He's strong and aggressive inside. Jackson jumper. That was deflected by Murray. And Murray takes off on the other end of the floor wanting a fast break. <laughs> Barnes got it right back. Excellent rebounding guard is Val Barnes. Barnes with 18 now. Seven in this half, and Billy, he can get really hot in the second half. Look at the Ohio State game earlier this year. Exactly. Had 24 in the yeah. second half against the Buckeyes. 24 of his 27 points in the second half. Oh, but this time, he commits a silly foul. He had 16 out of his 18 against Indiana in the second half, so we know how he can explode. Only number one against Barnes. 13 foul. And A.C. Earl is coming in for Iowa. <laughs> Millard ready to go out. He's got to understand it. Right now, hey, you're a player, son. You're not going to be in there for five seconds at a time. You're showing Coach Davis you belong on the floor. He thought he was being replaced in his right. lab instead who sits. Jackson. Uh, that goes against Jackson. His fourth. Two Wolverines now. Nice shot by Glassbar. Held his ground there, Jim. Two Wolverines south of the four. Jackson and Riley. Nice dish, but out of control. Most of the time, when you go down on a fast break, three on two, if you can keep the ball in the center instead of the wing, because the man in the center doesn't have that ability to go all the way to the hoop, because normally a defender is going to be right in his way, as Glassbar was. Kalinka, number three, in for Jackson. Kalinka's been silent today, coming off that 16-point game he had in his last outing. Only, only two. Only taken a one shot right. in this game. Double up on Earl. Gets it back to Millard. He lost control of it on the Murray layup. again. But Murray. Millard again. 
Wow, he's got strong hands. He ripped that rebound Woo. down. I liked him yesterday in practice, and he's doing some stuff out here today. That one got away. Look at Kenyon Murray battle on the board. They're possessed right here. That's some offensive rebounding. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer and Pat O'Brien from Carver Hawkeye Arena. Jackson and Riley with four fouls each on Michigan. And look at the offensive rebounds in this half, Billy. Iowa with eight to Michigan's zero. Well, Steve Fisher talked about being out-rebounded by 22 in here last year. And Iowa was behind in rebounding in the first half, so they're making up for it here in the second half. On tier Glasper. There's a lot to Earl. Had to come down with it, but he kicked it anyway. AC Earl has been asking for the lot. Now, that's one of the problems. You call a timeout, it gives the opposing coach an opportunity to set up a set play. And I think what you have is Weber stepping out of bounds. He did indeed. He stepped right on the line. Right by the Hawkeye bench. This pass a little too steep for Earl to go right down in the cylinder with it. So he wisely came right back. Well, Howard fake. was there, but Howard didn't want to get in any further foul trouble, so A.C. Earl did the right thing. Seven-point Iowa lead with the basketball. Trouble inbounding. A.C. Earl comes over to help out. Jim, if you're Michigan, you just want to settle down a little bit in this game. They've let the pace of the game get away from them. They need to start thinking about who are their scorers and getting the ball in their hands. A lot of time in this game. See, Jalen's trying to do too much too fast. Three on two. Over to Barnes on a wing. And no foul. Yes, there is a foul. Four. I thought so. I thought Jalen got him on the arm. First on Rose in the 16th foul. By the way, next Saturday on CBS, college basketball, Florida State and UConn. That will be followed by third-round coverage from Pebble Beach. The AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am will follow Jack Lemon. Can this be the year <laughs> where he finally makes the cut? Now, the year I want to see you walk down 18. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to see you in the, the Pro-Am. You know, my, my partner in real estate, Billy Satterfield, won the Pebble Beach Pro-Am one year. He and Lanny Watkins. Yeah, I know. I know Billy did. Was he a, a popular winner, too? Yes, he was. Very. He was back in our part of the country. Absolutely. His name is on the monument out there. Right there behind the first tee at Pebble well, maybe Beach. Maybe I could know two guys that would win that Pro-Am. You and Billy. To get you in that I thought I was playing in it this year. Barnes will shoot one more. By the way, Billy, Val Barnes, you know how he came up with the name Val? You know how he was named Val? Are you going to tell me it's backwards? No. He was born on Valentine's Day. Coming up soon. Very nice. I like that. Long rebound to King. Eight-point Iowa lead. And they stay in that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Bosco from the corner. That's why he's out there. And what happened there is he was so deep in the corner, Kenyon Murray's playing the top of that 1-2-2 two, two zone, could not get all the way out there to stop it. Yeah, he doesn't such handle smart, himself like a freshman. Right, he's such a smart ball player, doing well academically in school as well. He was a good student coming here, but he really knows how to play under control. Now with 12 on the shot clock. Now Smith, not a real good finisher here as a shooter. He's going to have to make a good pass. There it is. Good one. In the web on the blocks. Web shot. Back to a seven-point lead for Iowa. And, and a Murray by Murray. I'm going to call a foul on Bosco. I'll tell you what, Murray took a pretty hard fall right yeah, in front did. of us. He, I think he hit. I think he hit his head against yeah, the table. He sure did. He's getting up. You see, he goes right down. You know, he gets pushed out of bounds. 
Nice piece of officiating here. But there's Murray, who is so good at court coverage. And there's where he hit his head on the back. He kind of bumped out yep. on the foul on Bosco as he hit him with the rump. Yep. So that's the second on Bosco. And they're in the one and one now. Now, Jim, they got to the two-shot foul in the first half. So the big difference in this game in the first half, as far as I was concerned, they went to the line 15 times and made 13, and Michigan only was five for eight. They're picking up where they left off. One and one for Murray. Freshman from Battle Creek, Michigan. We'll shoot one more. Billy, I'd heard that growing up, Kenyon Murray was a concert violinist. So I said yesterday, name your favorite all-time musician. Anybody from the music world. Mozart, number one. A.C. Earl will come in for Webb. Smith goes out also as Millard's in the game. Bartles is in also. Now Smith is back in. So it's Bartles on the floor. Nine-point lead for Iowa. I thought Tally, who's now in the game, would have a big game here. Now Michigan just is not getting into their offense at all. And I think they really need to slow some things down. Bosco got hit in the nose. He's down and out. He's, he's knocked out, Jim. Millard misses the shot. Now, now he's, he's knocked out. He got up yep. for just a minute yeah, he, and started. Now, that was a knockout blow. He actually was uh, touching his teeth as though maybe he felt like he had a, a tooth knocked loose. But it took a hard blow to the head, evidently. Now, What's happening to Michigan right now is that they are we've got a lot of time on the clock and they are trying to get it all in one time down the floor. We're seeing the replay what happens here. Vasco goes up over the back. Oh, another one of those pops right. That looked like you in know, the nose. Billy. You walk right into those flying elbows. Certainly Millard did not intend to hit Vasco at all, but there it is. Right on the nose. Boy, he took a blow there, and down he goes. You can see the, uh, with some blood there, that you can see that the trainer has put on the gloves, which are part of the procedures now with the new rules in the NCAA. Boy, this team with Chris Weber having a similar type of injury. Yeah, you were right, Jim. He tried to get up at first, and then all of a sudden, he just uh, he just went right to the floor, totally knocked out. Such an emotional crowd here today, Billy, and just total silence here out of respect to the Michigan player. Well, he just lifted up his knee, so he's he's coming too. So certainly from that standpoint, it's a good sign. And obviously in the sport of basketball, the referees will allow Michigan to take whatever time necessary here to administer to, uh, to Bosco. He's now sitting up and get a well-deserved uh, applause from the crowd here. So we may have two players yes. in Michigan wearing masks. I mean, yep. uh, Chris will get rid of his, and James will have to wear it. He's going to be a little shaky standing up. And Millard, what, look at this, Billy, yep. from nice Iowa, gesture. who inadvertently hit him with the elbow. Class gesture comes over. Now he'll be... He'll, I mean, he's no position, obviously, to play, so it won't be a matter of that he could get out there because I think he is uh, out on his feet as we speak. Now we're going to have another s series of emotion, Jim, in terms of what is this fire up the Michigan crowd? 
By the way, during that whole thing, it might have been lost. Millard was hit with a foul on a rebound attempt. So Michigan controls, but trailing by nine with 11.33 remaining. Millard becomes the number one point man on this 1-2-1-1 one, one, one full court press, which Michigan has handled fairly well today. But it has taken them out of their offense. Now, now what, what has happened here, Jim, is that there was blood on the floor. So they will have to put a disinfectant down on the floor and clean that up with the towel. And that, that had not been done. Now, originally, in the rules, they decided to use the disinfectant on a shirt or a piece of equipment if there was blood on it. But then it was uh, ruled that that would not be sufficient. So the shirt or an article of clothing must be removed and changed. But on the floor, they're going to require the disinfectant. Do you think these measures are a little extreme? Well, Jim, I really do. You know, I, but, but I, you know, I've talked to Hank Nichols at length about this, and he says we will err on, on, on just going to the whatever extreme it takes to make sure nothing happens, you know. So that is the philosophy, and that's what they're going to do. So certainly I'd be the last one to argue with that. Back to the action, Jim. 11.33 remaining. Now, it does no good to run the sideline if you don't get somebody to help you. Yeah, how, he was running the baseline, now, but wait, I no, no. that score. No, now, wait a second. You cannot run, you cannot run the baseline. Because it was a foul, not That's a basket. Right. That's right. Now, see, you can run after a made basket, but you cannot run on the end line if there was a turnover or a foul. This should be Iowa's basketball. Yep. Michigan was getting the ball back after a foul against Russ Millard. Jim Burr came out way back. and I mean, Jim, maybe because all the time transpired, you're going to find the officials are going to say we didn't give the proper instruction to the man on the end line. But the only time you can run that end line is after a score. So what the officials are going to say because of all of the time that went to place, and they asked both coaches to cooperate here. They're going to allow him to, he's going to have to throw from a standing spot. That's a nice piece of officiating and real good cooperation from the coaches. Because technically speaking, Howard had violated. Howard finds King open. King underneath, bounce pass Weber. Puts it up backwards. I thought Weber was in there a long time, Jim. Certainly beyond three seconds. Well, uh, Millard had taken a three there. <laughs> Tom Davis should have really called it a day. Very patient. Working out of that box. Oh, Millard missed the alley-oop. It was perfectly set up by Smith. Uh, Tom Davis loved the execution of that play. It was a box. You'll see a box right here. Everybody thinking about what Iowa has been doing. And then you'll see the play was perfectly set up the weak side. Millard coming in there, and he just tried to finish it off with too much power. ACO goes to the foul line. Tally called on the foul. His second and number eight against Michigan. So they're in a one-and-one one Earl at the line. You got to telestrate Millard's eyes. I mean, they're... Popping right out of his eddy so far. <laughs> and missing the front end. Rose yeah, racing five. ahead to Rose. Uh, yeah. Four quick ones for Michigan to get back within five. That's why it's nice to be a six foot eight inch guard. Even with AC Earl on you, you can still score on a break. <laughs> nice move by Winter. Right around Jimmy King. Double teaming out of the press. Rose. <laughs> Two shots in a row over AC Earl. One of the best shot blockers in college basketball, and Jalen puts it right over the top of him. Oh, Earl got a little bit lost and threw it out of bounds. Let's get a report right now from Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, Jim, thank you. A couple of doctors, a couple of paramedics working on James Bosco. They are now saying he has a broken nose. He's still bleeding profusely, but he's sitting up, he's chatting. His mom and dad are at the game, and so they're back there in there with him. 
And uh, another mask for Michigan. Back to you. Exact injury that uh, happened with Chris Weber in a practice injury. Hit with an elbow by Eric Riley. King in the foul. He'll shoot two. Foul on the winners. Jim, maybe. And this is a terrible thing to say in regard, you don't want to see somebody get hurt, but you know, Vosco's injury is what really slowed and took the Iowa game away, took the crowd out of the game. So uh, a very valuable play on his part, and certainly something he didn't uh, he didn't want to do, but uh, it has changed the complexion of this game somewhat. The crowd is still silent now. Winters and Earl come out as Webb returns, along with Looking Bill. So King at the line. King with five points today. He'll shoot two. Only a 60% free throw shooter is Jimmy King. And because of his slashing ability, he's the kind of guy should get on the line more than he does. The King Bill boxed out on Howard. Lead is four, Iowa 67-63. Tom Davis says A.C. Earl sitting down, wanting him to have him rested for the stretch drive. Kenyon Murray, maybe the guy that has to score some for him here. He's been the one off the bench that's done it so far today. Here he is, Murray. Smith, oh, not, a good, Way too not a good shooter. out by Steve Fisher a number of minutes ago plus the injury to Vasco has completely changed this game around all the momentum has now shifted Michigan got their composure back they're not trying to make up the for that deficit that they had in one play and Chris Weber taking over inside boy Chris Weber will give you some reaction shots won't he yep or should I say should I say Macy Weber he told the Michigan public relations sports information staff put me in the guide is Macy Weber out of respect to my father. His real name is Macy Edward Christopher Weber III. Says it's okay if we call him Chris. He has 15 points. Unable to make good on the free throw for the three-point play, but he has sliced the lead to two. Then I think it's time to get Kenyon Murray the ball. He and Val Barnes out there work it until one of those two can get off a decent shot. <laughs> they had a little two-man game going over on the one side. Back to the box offense now. There's Barnes. With five on the shot clock, he took it. That was a good play, though. When you get a good shot by one of your better players. That ties it. King ties it on the slam. Weber with the assist. I don't know how much longer A.C. Earl can sit down. Barnes wants the lead back, and he gets it on the roll. And as I say that, A.C. Earl gets up. Here he comes. Michigan scored the game's first nine. Iowa tied it at halftime. Then Iowa was in front by nine. Michigan's come back to tie it here in the second half. Murray blocks Weber. Surprised Weber was going to take that shot. Three-pointer by Rose. Long rebound to Murray. They've done so well going down inside to Chris Weber. No reason to take a three. Barnes. Howard outlet to King. Here three on the one. Wolverines. Three on one with King. Tied at 69. Nice no call by the referee. 7.20 remaining. You see, 11 to 4 since Bosco went down. Took the momentum out of the game. Excellent pump fake inside by Val Barnes, Jim. Val on King, his second. 
And we have some subs. Here's Earl. Glasper back in. Riley and Jackson, the two Wolverine players with three fouls, replace Weber and Talley. Well, some good things have happened in Iowa this week. You know, uh, Eldon Miller won his 500th game. Former Ohio Iowa. State yep. coach. Now yeah. out of Iowa. The other thing was interesting. Iowa Essex Community High School did something in basketball history this week that's never been done. Every point they scored in a game that they won was scored on a three-point shot. First time wow. in the history of basketball. And you know in Iowa, they still play women's basketball six, six on a side, three on each end of the floor. Well, there's a timeout on the floor with 7.01 remaining, and the two free throws gives Iowa the two-point lead. CBS Sports coverage continues after this message and a word from your local station. Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. McDonald's, what you want is what you get, guaranteed at McDonald's today. And by UPS, the package delivery company more companies count on. This has been a terrific game from the start. Iowa leading 71-69, 7-1 remaining in the game. Jim arrested A.C. Earl back in the game with 7-0-1 to go. You got to figure that Tom Davis can let him go the rest of the way now. Puts Val Barnes down so they can have him fresh going down the wire. I don't remember Jalen Rose ever being out of this game. Seems like he's played every minute. This is the part of the game where Rose has so often taken over. Well, he tried to do too much for a while there. Now he's back into a good sink. Stolen by Murray. Three on one. Bartles brings it out. And they had a good three on one, but Glasper threw it behind Bartles. Two-point lead and the basketball. Well, you can see Millard, Riley not even going to guard Millard when he steps outside. And that's why he's always open for the pass. Ten on the shot clock. Here goes that double O stack again. Freshman Glasper handling it. To Barlow's. Oh, better put it up. He gets it away. Wow. At the buzzer. Boy, was that cool, huh? Oh. Crowd helped him out, too, Billy, with the countdown. Nice hand. Jackson. Jackson. Oh. Boy, that was some catch. Ball was thrown behind him, and he still was under control. And really quick to the basket. Yep. Now with 12, Jackson. Nice make. Earl traveled with it. You'll see A.C. Earl down in the low post. The clock is working against him, but Jim, you made an excellent point there, and that is that the crowd counted down for A.C. Earl, gave him a lot of confidence to put that shot up just at the right time. Michigan much more composed than they were about four or five minutes ago. Riley positioned underneath to tie it. See, the reason that works is Jalen at 6'8 can throw right over the top of the zone. Kenyon Murray. He should put the shot up. That's the smart thing to do. Oh. Are they going to call it a jump? They call it a tie-up situation. Yep. Iowa has the arrow. But it was a smart thing to do. You double team. You're going to lose it. Just put up a bad shot and hope you get fouled. Webb, Barnes, and Smith back in for Iowa. So you'd have to figure they're going to go the rest of the stretch with this team. 5-0-1 remaining, tied at 73. <laughs> and Riley now with Webb, not going to guard him. Webb's going to take up a little slack. lost it. Smith in the right place. Tom Davis jumps up, sets up another offensive set. Boy, Murray's got some hands, doesn't he? Three Iowa players really didn't help each other on that one. 
And how about Jackson behind the back under the other team's basket? Dangerous play. This could give Michigan a lead. Down nine in the second half. Michigan now with a two-point lead. Weber on the bench. Getting good play out of Riley. Nothing surprising there. Foul. No foul called, and that's off Michigan. I thought Barnes was fouled on a shot. And a whistle, a break in the action. We'll be selecting a Chevrolet player of the game from each team at the end of this one. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. It'll be Iowa's basketball when we return with 3.59 remaining and the Wolverines by two. Oh 75-73, the horn to send the players back out. James Bosco returned to the huddle, to the bench for Michigan during that timeout. Wolverines used one earlier in this half, and Iowa has all three of its timeouts remaining. Yeah, that's a good news, bad news story. James, you broke your nose. That's the bad news. The good news is it may have helped us win the ball game. Well, they were down nine when he went out. They've outscored them 19 to eight since the injury. Michigan picks up tight, really tight man to man. That's a tough shot in there. Off Michigan, 21 on the shot clock. And Webb really wanted the ball down low, but a very tough shot over both Riley, who's got the good wingspan, has played very well off the bench, and Howard. Go back to that double low. Barnes for the tie. He is a pure shooter. 25 for Barnes. Game is tied. Now, Winters, who plays the top of that key very well in his zone, better than does Kenyon Murray. He gets to the corners better. Right. Block! What a block! And Iowa can take the lead. Smith. I don't know why Smith wants to be so anxious to put a shot up, Jim. Under three minutes. And this should be Earl and Barnes' show. That's Earl. Right. There you go. Uncoordinated, gangly, anything you want to say about a negative, but he gets the job done. Stolen by Winters, right back. And Webb is hammered underneath. He'll go to the line for two. Winners has great ability to feel in his defensive position, whether it's at the top of the key on that zone or whether it's in the press. Great anticipation on his part. Jawan Howard called for his third. Call against Howard. Riley goes out. And it comes down to some free throw shooting, Jim. Something that uh, Division I college basketball has really fallen off on. Lowest foul shooting so far this year from a percentage standpoint since 1958. Two Game. shots for Webb. What have been flow in the last uh, six or seven minutes? Michigan trailing by three with 2.28 to go. See, watch all that ground that Winters covers in that zone defense. Goes a wild shot, but push while in the act of shooting. And Winters came from all the way down on the low blocks to come out to the top of the key to try to guard Rose on that plane. I thought he was in the act of shooting, didn't you? Now they're saying it was before the shot, so pretty close. Fourth against Winters. How about those hands? He snatches it, puts it right back, back to the rim. Well, Howard kept it alive. Boy, some bodies yep. crashing, too. They say the ball went over the top of the backboard. Touched last by, by Iowa. 
Boy, these referees have been excellent. Of course, we got three of the best in the business out here today. Very intense game, but they are all over it. Murray back in for winners. The officials just give them the credit. That's Tim Higgins, Ed Hightower, and Jim Burr. Three of the very best having an excellent game as a team. Timeout called by the Wolverines. They're left with one. They trail by three with 2.11 to go. There's your game reset. Michigan will on timeout. The next foul by Iowa will put the Wolverines into a one and one, and the arrow belongs to Michigan. There have been 12 ties in this game and 15 lead changes. Jim, I think if you're Michigan, you want to get the ball in Jalen Rose's hands, but not to shoot, to get the ball down inside to Weber and Howard. Go inside now. He's looking there inside, and Earl yep. reached around and was called for it, his third. Good strategy there. And this will mean a one and one for Weber. And Jim, Iowa will be shooting two the rest of the way. I think it's the first time this year we've had a game where a team was in the two-shot foul situation in both the first and the second half. Not a strong point in Chris Weber's game, however. Only shooting 53% on the year. 0 for 1 today. Make it 0 for 2. And oh. Webb didn't come down strong enough with it. Michigan right back. Well, that's a tie-up, but the arrow belongs to Michigan. Now, you were right. Webb had an opportunity there on the missed free throw to pull it down. It would have been a big rebound for Iowa. Millard. And Webb's going to come out. And even two minutes remaining. Oh, what a play! And that's going to be... I think he was going for the ball. I think he was going for the ball. What a play by Kenyon Murray. This kid's going to be a good one. This is some steal, just like winners made on the other end. He went up and took it right away from Jalen Rose, who's six foot eight, and then takes it to the hoop. Lieutenant Hayden Fry sitting courtside today. He looks at that and says, that's that's an all-pro defensive back kind of a move. Two shots for Murray. And this young man really worked on his free throw shooting yesterday. Great concentration paying off for him now. He's, he certainly is. He's six for six from the line. Now to give Iowa the five-point bulge. Now has scored more points against Michigan than any other team this season, breaking Duke's mark of 79. Still want to go down inside. Let Weber touch it. Throws in the lane. Weber gets it. Oh, he man. is something. You get him the ball, he, his hands are so good, Jim. He just explodes inside. That brought even the Iowa fans off the off their seats. And that kid is only 19 and the youngest of the five fives, Chris Weber. Foul called, foul called against Rose, his second. I don't know if I've seen better hands in college basketball than Chris Weber has. I mean, it just, he's so powerful, so quick. James Worthy had, at that stage in his life, those kind of hands around the basket. But other than that, there have been few and far between. Sometimes when he gets it down there, you can't tell whether it's Carl Malone or Chris Weber. Yeah, that's right. One more for Barnes. He's four for five today from the line. As Talley comes in for Jackson. Michael Talley. Now, what you have is Steve Fisher trying to free up... Jalen Rose here, let Tally handle the ball, then give it to Jalen, let Jalen penetrate and go inside. Smart move by Steve Fisher. Back to a five-point lead, 119 remaining. And look at Iowa doesn't press. I thought they'd press a little bit to occupy some time. See, here's what they're gonna put the ball in Tally's hands, and then let Rose penetrate. Millard steps in front and makes the steal. And Weber commits the foul. Weber's fourth. Millard will shoot two.
Jimmy hadn't played many minutes, but it looks like he's been shooting a lot of free throws in his spare time because his form is excellent. And Indiana moves out a little further in front in the Big Ten, it looks like. That gives Iowa a seven-point lead. Now Jalen Rose has got to put the ball on the floor and drive to the basket when he touches it. Three-pointer by Weber. No. Earl underneath. And Earl will shoot two. The Big Ten came into the game today with four teams in the top 20. These two clubs obviously there, but when you look at this league, you got to be thinking six or seven deep, Jim, in the NCAA tournament, right? It, I'd say that's yep. about right on. I like the high end on that. Yep. 52 seconds remaining. Boy, they are putting the nails right in that coffin with these uh, free throw shooting. Just excellent by Iowa. This point, if he makes the free throw, will tie him on the all-time scoring list with Don Nelson for number five at Iowa. He yep. is tied. And that is thrown away by Sally. Well, we pointed out Iowa, the best free throw shooting team in the Big Ten, now shooting over 70%. And they have really taken that to their advantage in this game. Looking Bill in for Millard. Kind of interesting, the assistant coach is really excited about Millard's performance today. He's worked with him all the time in the scout team. Well, that's the wrong guy to send to the yep. line. Val Barnes led the Big Ten in free throw shooting last year. And he'll shoot two. Let's set the lineup tonight on CBS, a special edition of 60 Minutes. A salute to three remarkable women who have honored us with their presence on this broadcast. That's 60 Minutes tonight. And then it's Murder, She Wrote, followed by the CBS Sunday movie, The Shell Seekers. You know, Jim, we keep talking about A.C. Earl, all Big Ten, but, you know, this Val Barnes starting to do some pretty exciting things in this league, coming off that big 29 points in overtime win against Michigan State. 27 today. You saw Jawan Howard. He, he's fouled out of this game. Iowa with a nine-point lead. Give him a excuse him for once, huh? Well, surprisingly, he misses them both. Alley for three. That's Kenny Murray again. Barnes in there too to grab it. You don't want to get fouled here. He got hit in the head. Yeah get a chance to uh, improve on that last free throw shooting effort. Well, Jim, to your best if you just give up the ball, try not to get fouled. A little time go off the clock. And a smart play by A.C. Earl. You see where he was on that play? He stayed right under the basket His, to defend in case somebody made a steal instead of running down court. Number 55, the grad, thinking all the way. Ooh, three in a row. He's five out of nine for the day. You can see Tom Davis takes everybody off the line, has them back down in defensive position. And with an 80-plus percent free throw shooter, we assume that he's not going to be a miss, but he misses four in a row. Still time running out on the Wolverines. Open is Weber. Kenyon Murray. Murray's got the great legs. So quick off the floor. 
Now, Tom Davis had some big wins at Lafayette, BC, Stanford, and here, but this one's got to be, considering everything that came into this game, one of the biggest of his career. The Chevrolet players of the game are Ray Jackson from Michigan, 12 points off the bench. Val Barnes from Iowa with 27. A check in the amount of a thousand dollars donated to each college's general scholarship fund. There's five straight misses from the free throw line by two of the better free throw shooters that Iowa has. Six. He had been seven for seven yep. for the game prior to that. Goes wow. three. And that's three. Forces Michigan to call a timeout. The lead is six. So Rose rips a three, and Michigan has now used all of its timeouts. 86-80, Billy, some strategy. Well, Jim, we go back to free throw shooting. We saw Indiana lose to Kentucky. Indiana lose to Kansas in their only two losses this year. This game could have been put away by Iowa. Not to say that they won't put it away anyway, but they've missed six straight free throws. And Rose steals it. Oh, he had a foot on the line. Almost. Yeah. Tough place to inbound from. Yep, it really is. Unless you're playing soccer. Not a bad time to set a solid screen and go long. Smith gets away from the pack. And he wants to keep the ball moving. Don't get fouled. Jim Bartles will go to the line. But nobody came to Bartles to help him, so he didn't want to throw it away. But only 10 seconds remaining. Michigan without any timeout. Right, they cannot stop the clock. And Weber is fouled out. Weber and Howard both foul out of this game. 